No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Limelight, makers of professional lighting for independent filmmakers. My Road Reel International Film Contest. Enter at myroadreel.com. All right, hi guys, I'm here with Andy from AJA. Hi there. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the new Scion camera. Okay, my pleasure. Okay, so this is Scion, the first production camera from AJA. The camera itself is a HD, 2K, and UHD and 4K production camera system. Uh, AJ, as you well know, uh, kind of started the whole ball rolling for external ProRes recording. So this is built around ProRes encoding technology as well. So internally, the camera system itself can record to our pack media up to ProRes 444. We can do up to 30 frames a second at 4K 444. If you wish to go to 60 frames a second at 4K, we can do that at 422 as well. The camera itself weighs just six pounds out of the box. So it's a magnesium case, super lightweight, but really, really strong. Yeah, it's really light. Yeah, really light. In terms of operation, really straightforward. So we believe that one man or one woman, no problem, you're good to go. You can own or operate it. Why a camera now? Okay, the reason being is that we've developed so many different types of technologies, and really what this is, it becomes the nexus of production, and it involves so many other techs that we've brought together in one. We looked at the market and realized no one is making ergonomic systems anymore. There's really only a right, couple of people right. out there. And that's, one, that's really one of my pet peeves is cameras that aren't designed to be usable right away. Yeah, exactly. So the idea was with the least amount of accessories, you would be able to run and gun. And also then, what accessories? Any ones you like. We covered with quarter 20 holes top and bottom, right. but if you don't want that cheese plate, I'm pretty sure as we speak now, somebody's designing third right. party accessories already for it. Right. So you can fit what you like. Uh, REM6 style rosettes built into the case, no problem at all. 15 millimeter rod adapters for the top, the front and the rear, no problem at all. Whatever power supply you want, you can change that to fit on the back. It's very straightforward. Yeah. It's not the case that we'll say, well, this is the top end model, there's a middle one, and then there's the base entry model. Right. Every feature we've talked about is in this model. Right. Just one camera side. The essence of AJA uh, has been the ProRes encoding. So we've had a long time to really develop the way we do that. So that's definitely in there. You're certainly right about that. And there's no reason why you couldn't use one in line with one if you wanted to anyway as a backup recorder. Right. Right. Uh, and you'll find the same encoding quality for each. So now this is, Retailing basically for 9,000. Now, what does that include? Yeah. Okay, so when you spend your, you know, give me nine grand, I'll give you five bucks change. You're gonna get the camera body, you're gonna get the 12 volt power supply, you'll get the handle, the 15 millimeter rod, the lank collar, and the top mount here. So pricing is to be confirmed on the other accessories, but if you have the rest yourself, you're good to go. The shoulder pad as well already comes with that. Uh... That comes with it as well. Now, the way that's designed, we worked very hard to make sure we could get a sweet spot so it's got the offset as well. So it's yeah. not just a flat thing, it's done for that. But you know what? If that doesn't work for you, it's removable. If this works for you and you wear it out, you can replace it. Uh, so just last few things. Uh, picture profiles and just if you could talk a little bit about RAW uh, recording. Absolutely, yeah, sure, no problem at all. So in terms of the RAW, we have a Thunderbolt 1 on the rear of the camera. So Thunderbolt 1 will allow you to do 30 frames per second AJA RAW. Now we're not gonna dive too deeply into what does AJA RAW mean, but if I said before that this is an open camera system with non-proprietary uh, accessories, then it's the same for RAW for us. It will be based around an open system. Okay. We'll make that available to the people. We're not gonna keep that for ourselves. Okay. So it's 30 frames a second from the Thunderbolt, and then it's a up to 120 frames a second from the 3G okay. SDR. So then internally, it's up to 60? Internally, it's up to 60 frames a second, 444. That's gonna take you up to 2K. If you want to do 444 at 4K, it's gonna be 30 frames a second. Okay. Now, currently, that's really a bandwidth issue, but that's ProRes encoding. Okay. Right. So these are recording to your cards, right? That's right. Pack Media, which in, is in the region of around two bucks 50 a gig in terms of recording time. It is very cost effective and also warranty performance. So we're gonna say, this will do it for you. Use the pack dock, Thunderbolt or USB 3 to transfer. So it's really quick to move things around, preview. We can preview on camera and we can even use the rotational dial to jog frame by frame. It's some yeah. awesome stuff. And so just one last thing, uh, in terms of uh, a log output out of the, okay. can you change whether, where you send the log output through different 
the different outputs and what, what you're recording? Currently at the moment, <clears throat> excuse me, so the, currently at the moment the camera's linear. So they're all set to be linear. Now we haven't done, or we're not going to release any more information about uh, looks at the moment. Okay. What is likely is the camera will probably remain there and then we have Lookbox, which is the technology we'd probably recommend you use in line with it. Okay. So for now, it's going to be linear outputs. Yeah, so if you, you just want to talk about uh, when this might be available. Okay, so at the moment we're saying summer 2014. So we are so close to release on it. But as with anything AJA, we want to make sure it's perfect before it leaves. So this means we're in the final straight for organizing the color science, dialing in the fine details before we let this out. But I would say it is going to be summer So it's essentially, it's, it's essentially ready? Yes, yeah. I mean, we have multiple units here. These have all been individually calibrated and tuned for the show. Um, in terms of production, um, we're good to go. So all the small things that we've done, all the, all the hard stuff, like we've seen this on a shop bed, like earthquake style conditions, yeah. never dropped a frame. Temperatures, no problem, drop test. So all of the tough stuff that's really hard to lick is already out the way. We're into the final straight, which is dialing in, color science, looking at the dynamic range and all those, all those kind of elements, the, the last, last but most important section. So you'll see this this summer for sure. Now I know it's sensor wise, this sensor that's in this camera, I'm sure you won't tell me who it is, but we have an idea. We have an idea of who it is. Mm -hmm. Now, other companies have had some issues with mm -hmm. this sensor. Uh, so you think that you've you've solved those? When you look at a sensor and you look at any camera, and certainly a camera at 4K, it's really important to stress the relationship between the sensor, the glass, the filtration, the color science, and the encode. So obviously we are long-standing experts in encoding, so we have that covered. In terms of the color science, we're working daily on rebuild and making sure that we've got the best color science there. We do introduce at the front of the system here a combined filter, so IR cut and OLPF combined. So that reduces moiré patterning and also gives us really strong, punchy, vibrant colors because we use the infrared cut filter. We've opted for PL mount only on this, and there's a reason okay. for that. That 4K size sensors are demanding, super demanding. We want to put good glass on it. In terms of why we've gone for the APS-C, this one gives us the CMOS and it gives us the global shutter. So when you combine all those elements and you combine the way that we're looking at that science, it's no problem for us. No. So you you do have you have an optical low pass filter. You have an optical low pass filter on Absolutely. the camera. Absolutely combined with an IR cut and turn. Right. And that's a really really key feature. Moiré patterning is especially the, the more definition, the more you're likely to get those horrible, uh, you know, things like houndstooth. If I was to say, I have seen so many horrible shirts, jackets, ties, I mean some of the worst patterning right. known to mankind, yeah. pass by this thing without any issues at all. Right. It's extraordinary. It has a real, um, it will have its own look, is the way that I want to see it. You know, I think people will say, I'm going to get the Scion look. And the way that Red has a look, or the way that Ari has a look, we will have a look. And I think people are going to want that look. And so I'm here with Leslie at AJA, and we're going to talk about the uh, controlling the cameras. We're going to talk about the web user interface for controlling the cameras. And what we're seeing here is uh, direct feed of all of the different menu possibilities available on the camera, and as well as the streaming from the confidence monitor. And as I tap through, you can see right now we've got a three camera setup, and you can see I can go through the control of the three cameras. The, not only can I establish a master-slave relationship between these and have them all roll simultaneously, of course, matching time codes and so on, but I can match media naming across the three cameras so that when you are done shooting, you pull the drives out and go into post, all three cameras now have coordinated clip names, easy to decipher once you get into the post. Right, so, and this is just gigabit ethernet right to the back of the camera? That's correct, that's correct, yeah. Now we can also, part of the workflow here is to take raw off of the cameras directly via Thunderbolt, but that's not where we're utilizing here. This is just straight ethernet, and you could actually put wireless on the back of the cameras and do this wirelessly as well.